Hello everybody! I'm that one guy with the funny corruption video and today I have woken up and I've seen a lot of you people asking how do you do this? And to one of them I told them without me ever expecting to get to that amount for the video to get 10k views. Well it's obvious that the video just got way more than that so I guess we're gonna have to fucking do this now. Let's get to the first part. To be able to corrupt your games, you're gonna need a corruptor. The corruptor I use is called RTC, also known as a real-time corruptor. You can find this at Red Scientist Labs, their website. Let me go, let me go to it for you. There you go. The real-time corruptor. Vanguard, which is the latest version of the corruptor. Now, you, here it is, the Red Scientist Labs website with about the real-time corruptor. Now, if you keep scrolling down, you know, health warning with seizures and shit, you know, kind of, kind of, kind of logical. Um, and now, how to get RTC? You get the RTC launcher. This is the launcher. This is what the launcher looks like. Right now, I somehow have none installed, but that's kind of weird because I do remember clearly installing a couple. Let me open my actual client and show you that I, what I installed. There we go. All right. To download your versions of RTC, I recommend the latest version being 5.1.0, and it's on stable releases, you know, there's some betas in here, but that, 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 that really is out of the question here. So, if you downloaded RTC 5.1.0, you're going to see a screen like this, and I'll go through everything for you. Bishawk, Dolphin, PCX2, Citra. Biscog Legacy and Biscog 50X and Melon DS are all engines to corrupt your shit on. All emulators you can do it on. Bishawk is uh, well. Let's start with Dolphin. Okay, we have Dolphin for the for Wii and GameCube games. We have PC PCSX2 for obviously PlayStation 2 games. We have Citra for 3DS games. Melon DS for Nintendo DS games. And Bizhawk is basically for everything else that's below the Wii. For example, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, PlayStation 1, Genesis, etc. You might ask yourself, but dude, I already have an emulator. Too bad, you're gonna have to use this one, because this one's specifically built for the RTC launcher. Now, I'm going to demonstrate to you how to corrupt a Wii game, so we're gonna be using Dolphin. You can also get some pre-checks. I really recommend the Win Volume Limiter. You need to download this because, as you might have seen in previous videos of mine, ah! Ah! your ears will get blasted out at some points. But for now, we're just gonna open Dolphin. Here we have Dolphin. It looks it looks just like regular Dolphin. It works the same as regular Dolphin, except there's another thing to it. We have the real-time corruptor engine here. Now, the the GUI never looks like this at the start. The GUI usually looks like this as a start. Simple mode. What will best describe the game you're trying to corrupt? Modern platforms, in this case because we're playing on the Wii. Auto selected engine. This basically is just giving you every single two you need, just played it up. Wow, I clearly am a more experienced user in, uh, when it comes to corruptions, so I always usually switch to the normal mode, and also just generally, generally just fuck around and experiment with certain value lists and replacement values and domains too, and I corrupt using that. So let's take a game for example. Well, we had New Super Mario Bros. Wii in my latest video. Now, I personally use the Glitch Harvester, which is also made in simple mode, but if you wanna like corrupt like right away and just immediately see results, you can just manual blast. Manual blast all you want. I don't recommend putting auto corrupt on on very high values because you're gonna get shit like this very quickly and if you keep it on for too long the game will crash
Yeah. This is another prime example why you why I recommend you put on a volume limiter. But yeah, here we explain the real time part of the real time corruptor. But what I usually do is use save states. So I, if in case you want to corrupt specific parts of the game, because every time you use the real time corruptor, it's eventually will crash. And you're gonna have to start all over from the beginning. And for example, in New Super Mario Bros. Wii, you can't skip through the cutscene. So in this case, we're gonna watch the cutscene entirely, <laughs> skip through that, and get this out. Appears I already have a save. Here we go. So, I already have a nice little thing happening over here. So, create a selected glitch harvester state state, in this case. Wait for the world to spawn in. And we have a safe state. Now, if we, if we crack with the intensity all we want, we can load and corrupt, and it's just corrupting the specific part you want it to be corrupted instead of purely real time. Which is what I use when I want to corrupt over and over and over and over the same part to get different results each time. For example, Lona Corrupt. I'm gonna get a very good result. The music's very loud now. Mari becomes very weird looking. And yeah, that's basically how you corrupt shit. We could get more and more results. Let's see what happens when I do this. Nothing really interesting happened so far. So, if you want a different result that's not interesting enough, load and corrupt! This causes you to be in an infinite death loop. So I recommend you to not use load and just re-corrupt it. We get a wide Mario. I do not know Mario's hitbox by the way. It's just gonna be way difficult. That's actually fucking cool. Wait, I'm gonna add that to the stockpile, which is something completely different. We have the Glitch Harvester, which I'm using right now. This is a more advanced explanation on the Glitch Harvester in its entirety. A more detailed explanation on what the Glitch Harvester is, is basically you just get a save state, a specific part, a specific snapshot of the game you're playing right now. So for example, I'm currently, my save state is in World 5 Castle. And every time you corrupt it, it creates a little stash. I can also, when I think like, oh, wait, that corruption I did at the first time was pretty cool. You could just go back to that. And you can get your fuck ears fucked up, but I know, you know, it's for the funny. But yeah, for example, this thing's very cool. So I'm just gonna go up with the moon jumpy thing. Whee! If you think that's cool, you can add it to the stockpile. You can add, you can add the, you can just get the new stash name. Well, for example, well, let's say Moon Jump. But what if you wanted to sanitize it as some sort? If you want the corruption to be, if you think one of the features of the corruption is very cool, for example, White Mario, but you don't like all the other shit going on. Like, for example, you like this. But you don't like the fact that this, that the background's black. I'm pretty sure we need to see here somewhere. Hold on. Sanitize. Here we go. You right click on the corruption and press sanitize. In this case, I really like the fact that Mario can moon jump in this. When you hold two. 
What I don't like is that the fact that the background's black. So, now I can sanitize the corruption. Basically, remove parts of the bits that are shifted. The adjustments that are made to, that are game breaking. So, let's start sanitizing and see if we can keep the part where he moon jumps. In this case, Mario no longer moon jumps. So, is the effect you are looking for still present? No. Is the effect you're looking for still present? In this case, Mario can still moon jump, but the background's no longer black. So, yes! Is the effect you're looking for still present? Mario no longer moon jumps, so no. And it makes it spe more and more and more specific until we actually have that one specific part of the corruption that we really like that we can actually add to like a stockpile and sometimes people mix up corruptions different corruptions different effects they mix it up to make it even funnier i just do completely random shit and laugh at the results so we're almost done sanitizing and now we have one corruption, and that is Mario's unintentional moon jump when you hold two. And now we're gonna send that to the stockpile. And we're gonna add that moon jump clean in this case. And with stockpiles, you could just add this, you can save it too. You can save them as. A stock file, an SKS file. So, for example, if I want to, like, you know, save it as something funny, like, say, uh, fuck.sks. And that's how you, yeah, save stock files. Although, this is not recommended. I think I left on a sentence that actually copies the entirety of the video game to the stock file. Which I do not recommend, necessarily, but if you, like, get somebody else's stockpile with a game you don't have, and it has this in it, it might be more convenient, but I still don't recommend it. I still just recommend having the corruptions be standalone, instead of the instead of it actually packaging the game with it. Because if you create more and more stockpiles, you're gonna get m bigger file sizes that are completely unnecessary. Which, in this case, I did by accident. Let me demonstrate to you how you're actually supposed to do it. Hold on. Here we go. Stockpile manager settings. Include reference files needs to be not checked. Because that saves the entire game together with your stockpile. And, yeah, that's basically how you corrupt. So, we, what we learned here. Simple mode, you could just manual blast the fuck out of your, out of your game that you have in your dolphin. Or you could, like... You know, update the glitch harvester save state to a place that you want. If you want a very specific place, you go to that place, you update our save state, you load and corrupt each and every time. And if you get a funny result, you're just gonna well, in this case you're not you're not able to do it in a stockpile. If you like the results, you can just go to normal mode, go to glitch harvester, you see it's automatically highlighted the corruption you're doing now. And if you like the corruption a lot, go to stockpile. If you like the specific corruption, if you see specific corruption, you like the specific part that you like of the corruption, you can sanitize, which basically 880 time different corruptions to happen in this. You keep going, 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 going until you find that one specific corruption and have a clean version of it. And when you're done, you can always save. And I recommend you to not include the reference files. Well, that's basically it. So, hope you guys enjoyed my tutorial. That's absolutely trash. I'll probably make a better one soon. I was just kind of in a hurry. So, I hope this kind of teaches you. I'll make an in-depth tutorial later. See you guys in the next corruption video. I'll probably will be making like right after this. Goodbye.